try to guys. So in day 24 we have to help the elves move to a mountain pass uh, full of snow. And the problem today is that there are some uh, blizzards which we have to avoid so that we don't get frozen. So we have to move through the map from the top row to the bottom row and each time we move the blizzards also move in the direction that these uh, brackets and V shapes uh, point to. Also as a small note each time one of the blizzards move out of bounds it respawns at the beginning of the line or depending on uh, each di in, uh, what direction it moves. And yeah I mean for example the maps can get quite complicated and also the input looks uh, pretty complicated so it's gonna be pretty difficult to move uh, safely and yeah I mean the rules look pretty straightforward so for the first question what we need to compute is the number of steps that we need to make so that we avoid all the blizzards from the beginning to the end of the map then for the second part we have to do this trip three times because one of the elves forgot his snacks so we have to go to the end, then back to the beginning and then back to the end again and tell how many minutes we require to make this entire trip. Alright, so for the solution I wanted to have this uh, structure to keep the blizzards and I uh, thought that it would be maybe one idea to keep each direction into a separate vec. So to have a vec for the blizzards that move in the direction up in the direction down, in the direction left and in the direction right and also to improve the performance of uh, the algorithm I also thought that it might be a good idea to pre-compute all the positions that the blizzards will be in because each time they loop around they will repeat the same position so for example the blizzards that move to the right or to the left they will uh, basically wrap around after the width number of minutes so they will be in the same position so we have to keep only that many uh, hash sets of points for uh, those blizzards so then I have this tx function that will uh, pre-compute all the points in the direction that we give so it will just uh, create a blizzard vec and initially it will only have the initial state of the map and then we just have to loop around until we find uh, one item that is the same as the initial item so that's what uh, here we compute a new blizzard so we just have to uh, get a new position where we just uh, increase the position with the direction that we give and then if any of the coordinates are out of the bounds of the map we wrap uh, to the beginning of the map so yeah Basically, as I said, if the new position is the same as the initial position of the blizzards, we just break the loop. Otherwise, we keep the new blizzard and we just return the entire collection. Then to be able to use an algorithm like A star, I created this uh, state structure. This will hold the position of the human or the elf, whoever moves through the blizzards. And the minute that we are in it, basically, if this is just like the index so we know um, which uh, blizzard from the ticks to use then we have this uh, valid function that uh, just checks if the position of the current state is valid so if it's inside the bounds or if it's um, or uh, if it's in the beginning or if it's in the end position and also it should not uh, be intersecting with any of the blizzards so we just check if uh, none of the blizzards contain the current position and as I said the minute of the state is basically which blizzard to use from the ones generated by the ticks function then we have a successors function which uh, generates all the possible states that we can reach from uh, from the current state so we generate all the position and uh, the next minute for each uh, direction that we can move to so we can move up, down, left, right or stay in the same place. And then if the new state is valid then we can uh, try it. Otherwise there's a, yeah, there's no point in trying that state. And finally like for a heuristic function we can use the Manhattan distance from the current position to the end position. Uh, then as I said I have used the pathfinding crate and I use this A star algorithm. So that's why I needed all those helper functions. And basically how uh, how I did it for the first part is that A star first takes the initial state, which is just the source position and the minute zero. 
then it takes a function to generate the successors so we just pass here a closure that takes in the state and returns the successors for that state then it needs an heuristic function which is just the Manhattan distance from uh, the current state to the destination and it also takes a function that uh, checks if uh, we are in the destination uh, state and yeah basically it returns the cost and it also returns the path but for the first part we are uh, interested only in the cost so we return the cost so for the second part we have to use the a star algorithm again and initially we use it the same as before we have to move from the beginning to the end then what we have to do is to initialize a state it should be the initial state for the second pass and we start from the destination now and the minute will be basically just the cost of the previous road so we take the last uh, state from the list of uh, like the path and we take the minute that uh, it uh, has so that's the minute that uh, is next i mean this made the most sense to use it like this instead of just passing the cost and yeah then we call the a star algorithm pretty much the same but here we have to specify the source as the destination and then again we have to initialize the new state now from the beginning but again with the minute set as the last minute that's like the current time and we have to move again to the destination and we just add these three costs together and that's the total cost to move uh, three times on the map so yeah this was the 24th day and as usual if you want to check the source code you can find it on my github and see you guys next time bye bye